This next guest we have here is Tony Serra. I don't know if you've said that name any of you all, but he's a revolutionary lawyer who's won some of the biggest cases in the Bay. Here he is. He was um, Huey P. Newton's murder, murder trial, Patrick Croy, Bear Lincoln, and they get you any way they can. He recently ran into trouble with the law and spent 10 months in federal prison for guess what? Tax evasion. Damn it, you got it. They get you any way they can. Tony Sarah. I feel very much honored to stand here and speak on behalf and give my support to Mamiya. I immensely respect him. What I want to do is just read. Uh, what I want to do is just read one uh, vignette from his book, which particularly affected me. And I'd like to introduce that subject by saying yes. I've been a uh, career tax resistor and done a little bit of time in the federal form system, which isn't jail, as we all know. But what I did have the opportunity to see was the jailhouse lawyers. They have scant resources, old typewriters, no computers, very few law books. They subscribe as much as they can to some of the periodicals. And with this very you know, dim type of uh, uh, written material, they produce magic. They're in there before the sun rises in these little law libraries. They're there until 11, until the camp closes. They are on the typewriter. They are doing everything they can to perfect the writs. They work endlessly for the other inmates. They sit there. They listen, you know, to the, the, the issue. They give legal advice. I was never so humbled in my life. These people are the real lawyers in the criminal system. <laughs> they, they don't open to many people. They, you know, work. They have great fervor, they have great loyalty, but they are like workaholics, so they don't open. And the fabulous thing about this book, everyone has to read this book who's interested in the subject matter, is that they all told, based on what I read, they all told the issues and the stories and you know the, the struggle and the passion that they had. And, and there'll never be another book like that. There'll never be another Mumia. There'll never be someone who has enough universal respect that people who, are, from my perspective, are the greatest lawyers in, in this field would unload to. So, you know, it, it's a family experience to read. Let me read a little bit. It's from the uh, best of the best. These are the jailhouse lawyers. They're talking about Brooks Bay. He says, I was a class representative in the case of Stanton Story versus Robinson. I drew up the class action lawsuit and fought the deputy attorney general. All the plaintiffs were confined in the hole at SCI Pittsburgh. Stanton Starr was convicted of killing a policeman. Robert Joyner was accused of being a Black Panther and killing a park police. Larry Kareen Howard was found guilty for breaking Russell Maroon shows out of the Holmberg city prison. And I was found guilty alleged stalking a raper, killing him and beating him to death with, and robbing him. Every time we were taken to the federal court in downtown Pittsburgh, we had two police cars in front of us and two police cars and a car full of U.S. Marshals behind us in the prison bus made to seat 80 prisoners. The police and marshals would turn on their sirens and bully all drivers to let them pass. It was summertime and we would holler political slogans out of the window at the drivers. Blessed are those who struggle for a cause. Oppression is worse than the grave. Jail the real criminals, the police and the U.S. Marshals. Once we reached the courthouse, we were being escorted down the corridors of the courtrooms. We would holler, workers of the world, unite against oppression. Of course, all the federal workers would run and hide in their offices. I, 
I told the magistrate, Judge Mitchell, that none of the plaintiffs would stand unless he removed a picture of George Washington who possessed slaves. He refused to remove the picture and we refused to stand. I told him I would not refer to him as your honor unless he could prove to me that he had actually done honorable things. And that I would refer to him as only judge because he was here to judge the issues. Judge Mitchell said he had no problem with being referred to as judge. I told Judge Mitchell that he was not being just because he had a water pitcher, ice, and a cup and the plaintiffs had none of the same at our table. He ordered the U.S. Marshals to put a picture with the ice and cups at our table. I told them I took offense to the U.S. Marshals using tax dollars to transport us to court when the federal government did not violate our rights and the state dollars should be used. To my surprise, the Marshals joined in on my argument. He goes on, then at the end, we prevailed in our case. The restricted housing unit SCI Pittsburgh was closed and the new RHU was built. We were given two hours of outdoor exercise as opposed to 15 minutes. We were given, before prevailing on our lawsuit, we were given laundry services and lids on our food trays and the guards were precluded from strip searching us four times when we received visits. Just in, that, in this small little episode, you see so much. You know, you, you, you see the oppression, the, 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 the courage and the strength of the, the jailhouse lawyer and the fact that they do get things done that are valuable for all of the, all the other, you know, inmates. So, you know, I salute uh, uh, Mamiya for gathering this powerful symbolism in this book. Everyone should read the book. It's a fantastic thing and it's a tribute to a great mind and a person who is, you know, both a scholar and a very courageous individual of, of historic significance. Thank you.